Okay, last section, just a couple of quick slides here, just talking about, okay, how do I put this all together um, about probability rule, which probability rule do I use, uh, and which counting technique do I use for that? So with probability, the question you have to ask yourself, first of all, is it a compound event? Could more than one thing be happening? If it's not, just try the basic rule of probability where you count how many ways can that happen and divide by the total number of options. If it is a compound, well, then there's a few different options. Is it uh, an or, an and, or an at least? Is it one of those? Uh, if it's an or, then you have the addition rule. If it's an and, then you have the multiplication rule. If it's an at least, you can use the, uh, the complement rule, where they add up to one. So that's where I was saying when we did the complement rule back in that video, if your event is very complicated, then you can just do one minus the complement, which might be simpler. All right, now for counting. Okay, are you making a sequence of choices? Are they independent of each other? If they are, then you just use the multiplication rule, multiply, multiply, multiply. If they're not, then you can try to make a tree diagram where you're, you're splitting up all the different options. Um, we kind of did that for the, um, the tuxedo. We kind of did that for that. Uh, if you're not making a sequence of choices and you're just choosing something, you have to ask yourself, uh, does order matter? Uh, if order does not matter, it's a combination. If order, um, are you selecting all of the objects or just some of them? If you're doing some of them, then it's a permutation. So if order does matter and you're just picking some of them, it's a permutation. Here's one that we haven't mentioned. We're just going to talk our way through it. Um, if, you're, if you're doing all of the objects, then it matters if they're distinct. If they are all different, so they're all, this isn't a reordering of letters now, but this is saying, how many ways can I order everyone in this class? Well, this um, would just be a factorial. So there's n choices for the first one, one less than that for the next, one less than that, one less than that, one less than that, all the way down. Um, if they're not all distinct, then it's this reordering with the letters. How many ways can you reorder the letters? So that's that last formula that we did um, on that last page uh, from the, the last video. Okay. You're probably used to me. You know what I'm going to say next. <laughs> the only way to wrap your head around all these different counting techniques and all of these different probability rules is just practice, practice, practice. When it comes time for the next test, the next unit is going to be chapters 4, 5, and 6. Definitively, without a doubt, the hardest test. And it doesn't matter. It's not even me making hard problems. There is just so many different probability rules and counting rules. You need to practice, practice, first test. Don't be lulled into complacency. You need to practice. So that's it. That is the last slide I have. Uh, we'll stop this video. Check the link below for a few examples to try. Um, and hopefully this at least gets you started on some of the examples from uh, some of the topics from Chapter 5.